Hi, this is Ryan with Chalk, and today we're here with our Chief Scientific Officer, Dr. Matt Dorsey, to talk about Rhodiola rosea. If you like these videos, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get the latest information on herbs and natural living from our channel. Stick around for a coupon code to save at chalk.com. Okay, Dr. Matt, so tell me, where does Rhodiola come from? So it likes to grow, like most adaptogens, in environments that are extremely uh, difficult to grow in. So, for example, Siberia. It's found in different continents, uh, uh, including North America. Uh, it's been used by the Chinese uh, and the Russians. Um, but Siberia is its kind of like the quintessential difficult place to grow, right? Okay. And so if something can actually endure that kind of climate and grow properly, you know it's a really powerful plant. Right. And speaking of the Russians, I actually have this here. Um, this is a quote I wanted to read really fast. Uh, it's from a National Geographic article about rhodiola. Uh, referring to the Russian government extensively studying Rhodiola rosea. The government took these experiments so seriously that the scientists involved have been banned from speaking of their results or publishing their findings outside the country. Many of the adaptogen tests were conducted in the 1970s by the Ministry of Defense from a sealed research city in the frigid latitudes of Siberia. The USSR wanted plants that would help soldiers endure nights of frostbite and high elevations in Afghanistan. It was the rhodiola, a yellow flowered succulent that only grows in southbound, sorry, snowbound Arctic climates with a root that smells almost like a rose when you nick it that elicited the most promising results. Wow. So, you know, um, a lot of people are like, oh, herbs, they're for hippies or whatever, right? Right. This is the exact opposite of that. We're talking about the Russian military. Very, very hardcore wow. people. They would not use something if it didn't work. Sure. You know what I mean? So. So what's the most common reason that people take rhodiola? I mean, in my experience, um, energy and mood. Okay. Amazing mood booster, amazing energy booster. Um, if you need better endurance, whether it's mental energy, right, where you're just working on a project, or whether it's, um, you know, actual physical endurance, like you're hiking or, or running a marathon, um, that's, that's the main reason for sure. So could rhodiola be helpful for someone who experiences like the mid-afternoon energy crash? Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Um, and typically with these kind of adaptogens, more of a pulsatile kind of dosing where you're dosing throughout the day is gonna be better if you tend to have those crashes. So I would say dosing two to three times a day would be ideal. Uh, if you dose in the morning, you still will be less likely to have a crash, but if you tend to kind of do this, you know, sure. uh, aside from also making sure that you're eating, because a lot of people don't, That's right? Helpful, right? Like don't use stimulants <laughs> instead of eating, but, right. Right, but, um, but doing this, this like throughout the day kind of dosing, it's definitely gonna be better for more like sustained even energy. You know? Got it, yeah. okay, that's so interesting. Um, so why do you take rhodiola? You know, same thing that I said, just like energy, mood, focus. Um, obviously I also, in addition to having a lot of personal experience with it, I'm a researcher of this stuff, right? So I know what it's doing for me on a neurotransmitter level. But yeah, I mean like, I literally just took rhodiola right before this interview, as you saw, right? Energy levels are already pretty good, but having that uh, extra benefit of a nice neurological adaptogen that helps you kind of get in the zone and stay there, um, rhodiola is it's essential. Got it. Yeah, yeah that's that. so fascinating. Um, so if somebody's going to go out and hunt down some rhodiola, what's, what's, how do we vet a product? What should we look for and what should we avoid? Yeah, well, number one is that, um, so rhodiola rosea is the one you want. There's okay. another one, if you buy a product that says Rhodiola and then on the back it doesn't say Rosea, you don't know if it's the real, the real deal or not. If so, it's the real deal, they'll put it on the label. Right, it should say Rhodiola Rosea. There's another one called Rhodiola, uh, Rhodiola Crenulata. And that is not necessarily, it's not that it doesn't have some of the same properties, but it does not have the same ability to boost um, uh, energy and focus necessarily. It's not gonna be as active neurologically. And the, the, the OG, the old school one, the one the Russians studied, the one that the Chinese have used, primarily has been the rosea. The crenulata is also cheaper. So that's okay. point number one. Um, also, if it doesn't specify the, the actual genus and species on the bottle, that's kind of a, a marker for quality, just FYI. You know? okay. like it should say the full thing on there. That's also legally, that's what you're supposed to do, but not everybody does. The other thing is to make sure it's actually an extract and not just a raw herb, right? Um, so. The, for the layperson, basically, um, an herb can uh, either be in its raw form, where they just basically powderize it and just throw it into a capsule, or it can be extracted. And an extract can be up to hundreds of times more potent wow. than a raw herb. That's so important. Yes, okay. but the raw herbs are dirt cheap, and so you might be getting something like that without knowing sure. it. So make sure it's an extract. The last thing would be, if it can be wild crafted, that's ideal. 
Herbs that grow in the wild, they have to fend for themselves and they are gonna be typically more potent. Okay. And something else that you taught me is right now we see a lot of these popular or trendy ingredients sort of sprinkled into things. Is there a milligram dosage that you suggest people aim for or a starting point so that we can decide if something's just using it um, as a label or a sure. filler? Exactly, yeah, great question. So if it is an extract, then um, if it's a decent potency extract, then somewhere between maybe 200 to maybe 500 milligrams a day would be, would be good. But the reason it's hard to answer that question is because the extract potency can be highly variable. Sure. So the one that we use, for exact example, in like Action 2.0, that one is um, it's uh, standardized to like 3% rosavins. Okay. Um, so anywhere from like 2 to 5% somewhere in there, they usually use the rosavins as a marker. Um, that'll be a decent potency extract. Okay. And so the, the chalk um, formula is called Action 2.0, mm -hmm. and this contains rhodiola. For sure, yeah. That's what I just took a whole bunch of right yeah. before this. <laughs> Interview. Right. Perfect. Can you tell? Like, is it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that is so interesting. Okay, well, I, I think those are all of my questions about rhodiola. If people uh, want to find more information about this, uh, where, where can they sure, check you down? Yeah. So we have a couple different blogs on chalk.com, just specifically on rhodiola. One that I wrote, one that another one of our employees wrote. Um, but yeah, go to chalk.com, check out the, the blog. Um, and we have lots of good information on all different kinds of herbs and natural living topics on there, yeah. Perfect, thanks so much. For sure. Use these coupon codes over at chalk.com and thanks for liking and subscribing.